Uh, we're live again, but we've probably got nobody now. I think we've lost them all on the last <laughs> video. So, I don't know if anybody's still there, but um, we did lose the feed there for a few minutes. So, um, I'm just giving her a break for a second. Um, I'm just going to give her a treat because she's been a really good girl. I've got two people back on. Five, they're, they're slowly coming back. Uh, sorry, folks, we were just rejoining us. I'm not quite sure what happened, but Rachel's phone decided to die. Yeah. Good girl. So we're just giving Pinky a bit of a treat because um, she's been to such a good girl. And... Um, yeah, she's been an absolute star, so she's a good girl. And you can see, you know, now it, um, at a different angle. She's starting to look a fox terrier shape. She's not looking amazing. She doesn't look like she should be going to a show tomorrow, but she's looking, you know, in a tidy enough wire trim. <laughs> We're slowly starting to get people back. So for those that have started to rejoin us again, I apologise. I'm not quite sure what happened to our video. Um, we got cut off, but we're, we're now back. We'll just give it a couple of moments just for anybody else trying to join before racing on ahead. We haven't got that much left to do, really. I'm just going to um, go over just basic shapes of legs. Um, we've got a little bit of a because Pinky's been an absolute star, haven't you, girl? <gasps> yes. <laughs> well, yes, you've been a very good girl. Good girl. Good girl. <laughs> Probably should have used my phone from the start, actually. We're getting clearer pictures and Rachel's dodgy phone. <laughs> it's old, like me. Leave it alone. <laughs> Pinky's been an absolute star, hasn't she, you know, it's really important to let them have a breather and reward them when they're being so good. You know, this is supposed to be enjoyable, it's not supposed to be a chore for them. No, you you really don't want them getting into the thought process that the, the table's a torture chamber. It really shouldn't. The table can be fun time. And, you know, particularly for those of us that show, you know, these are a table dog. We show them on the table um, so that, you know, the table needs to be a happy place. Uh, so, gluing the ears, uh, I said we we use um, tear, tear mender. I'm not even sure where we get it from anymore. It's been, it's, it lasts I'm forever. So. I'm, I'm just going to put some spray back in her legs before I comb them out. Yeah, so uh, this is the spray Rachel's just used. So, for those that didn't see earlier, this is Magic Touch Grooming Spray number three from Crown Royale. Um, it's not the cheapest conditioner, but it goes a really, really long way. Um, it, I, I think it's the best. I, I really, really like it. Um, I did say this morning as well for all the pet guys <coughs> out there, you know, if you don't want to be spending a fortune, get yourself a spray bottle, put a bit of your own conditioner in the bottom of the bottle, Gosh. put some warm water in, shake it up, get it mixed and dissolved and use that as a spray because... Um, it's only really to help detangling, help lift mats, it helps it uh, stop matting again afterwards. And generally, once you've finished a trim, uh, most of us would wash their legs afterwards anyway and freshen them up, if not give them a bath, a full bath. So, um, you know, you can... Yeah, and just uh, one of the questions we get asked all the time, so I've just put a few bits here, it might be something worth doing while we've lost half the people. Yeah. Um, the, these are just some, I'll just pass into Rachel, some things that we, you don't need to buy loads and loads of different shampoos and things. If you're only going to get one for a wire fox terrier, I would probably buy here the plush puppy whitening. Um, I think that's a really, really nice shampoo for a, a wire fox terrier. Um, uh, and even though it's a whitening shampoo designed for uh, getting hair looking really white, there's no reason you can't use it on tan no. patches and black patches. And it actually it makes those colours come out really nice as well. And they do a nice wheat germ shampoo yeah. as well. That's not whitening, but it's still really nice to use. And although the shampoo's really expensive, you only need a tiny yeah. little pinhead amount. So... 
you know, it's more cost effective in the long run. Uh, another shampoo I've got here. Personally, I don't use this on wires very often. Um, but I use this quite a lot on our Welsh Terriers. One of the other breeds that we have is just the Crown Royale Oats and Aloe Shampoo. Um, I, I find that's really nice. Uh, uh, and then we generally condition with Crown Royale Conditioner. Now, if you go online and you look these things up, you might go, oh my God, that price is extortionate. But let me tell you, this bottle of Crown Royale Conditioner, I've had it for about three years. It, it goes a really, really long way. Because um, it's really, really concentrated and you, it'll tell you on the bottle the instructions, but you mix it up with a little bit of, um, water, well, a lot of water and not much shampoo. So actually it goes a really, really long way and the conditioner goes a really, really long way. Um, so even though it looks like quite a lot, actually it's probably more cost effective than buying a lot of stuff from the pet shops, which is already really dilute. Um, and I'd also say, you know, if you don't want to go for, uh, you know, a, a specific brand, with white fox terriers, I'd always suggest something like a tea tree shampoo or an oatmeal shampoo. Um, you know, it, just something mild and soothing. That's all they need as a maintenance. Um, or yeah. a coconut based shampoo. They're all lovely. Oh, all the conditioners, yeah. Tea tree, oatmeal, and coconut. Easy winners. But, you know, I'm not really going to say much more than that because today, you know, we're not going through bathing no. and conditioning because that could be a whole other thing that's in itself. But, but just when people are asking shampoos and conditioner, that's what we use. Not the only thing, you know, that you, you can use. But if you want to get something, you don't know where to start. I think they're really good, really nice, really suited to, to wire coats myself. So, again, for those of you that have been long suffering since the beginning of this, <laughs> we're back to pin brushing outlets. Now, I did roughly trim out this side of her this morning. Look it up. And again, like I said, we're not aiming for show trims today. Kennel maintenance trim. Just uh, trim to keep her tidy. Okay. So, you can see from pin brushing out this side to that side, the amount I took off this morning between the back legs. So what we're looking for generally is just a nice straight line or a slight curve from the outside of the hip down to the outside of the leg, where you can feel the muscle, thigh muscle meet at the top of the leg, then the inside of there, straight down to the inside of the back foot, straight line from the hop down, clear, this, the uh, slope up on the back of the leg here, which should mirror your front leg where your stifle is. So her stifle is here, and that curve there matches that curve there. So trim that off to match, and then just tidy up from the toes up to the front of where the hock is at the back. So you just get a nice, even line and edge and finish. That's all you're looking for. We're not on about doing shell trimming and considering this and considering that. That's not what we're doing. We're just making a nice, even, tidy lines um, for a nice maintenance trim. That's all we're doing. And literally, finger and thumb, pulling it out. Um, I said this morning about checking feet and nails. This bitch does need a nail stick in and I will do that. Um, and scissoring out the insides of feet, we need to be able to. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? You're watching me. You're watching me. You need to be able to handle your dog's feet and pick them up, and you need to be able to spread the pads a little bit, not harshly, just gently, and get your fingers in there and check for grass seeds, mats. Bits of concrete and gravel and all sorts they can have oh, in there. Hopefully you can all appreciate her hair in there. There's not really a lot in there. Even if we've got a hairy yeti like Sky, some of you that were around from the very beginning, even if we've got something really, really hairy like that, the one thing we will still keep trimmed is the inside of their feet. Yeah. Uh, it's really important on dogs to keep the hair there trimmed. Uh, one, because it gets matted and it's horrible and it, they can be lame from having mats in there. But also dogs sweat through their feet 
and dogs don't have sweat glands all over like people do. Um, so if they if their feet are really, really covered in lots of clumpy, matted hair, you've really taken away one of their um, abilities to uh, manage their temperature and when it's hot to reduce their temperature. Um, so all really they can do is pant. Um, so, so they do lose heat through their feet. So it is really important to keep those pads cleared, which is why it's so important to get your dogs used to actually uh, having their feet handled. I said this morning, if you've got dogs, because they can be really titchy about their feet, which is understandable. They're a terrier digging breed as well. You know, uh, um, Dachshunds, I think, are the bloody worst, to be honest, I have to say. But if you've got a dog that's sensitive about having its feet touched and absolutely hates it, then have time putting it on a table, just handling it and getting it used to you, putting your hand down its leg and just putting the palm of your hand to its feet so it's used to the touch and putting its foot back down. You don't need to be doing anything else with them. Just It's just working with them repetitively with patience and a calmness that they get used to you being able to pick up your feet, pick up their feet and be able to touch them. And then when they're comfortable with that, then you can start holding the paw and then just looking at the toes. And it's a process. And, and it's a process that should start with the breeders when they're puppies. Um, and it's something that owners need to be continuing doing uh, and working with when they've got them. And I know not everybody gets told that, uh, and it's a bit of a shame. Um, with checking their feet and things, it's never really an ideal situation. I mean, if you take them to the vet and it's an emergency and their toe's hanging off and they need to have their foot held, you might do it. But you don't really want to be getting your dog in a headlock so that you can check its feet. You want to really try to get to a position where you can do it in a, a, a relaxed, calm manner. I know for many that is much easier said than done, but you, you don't really want to get into a habit of wrestling with them over their feet because it just kind of feeds the, the thought process to them. You're doing something really horrible and you're not. But if you know you go and get them a head, in a headlock before you go and pick their foot up, they straight away learn, I don't really like having my feet touched because then I get a headlock. So if you can do it gradually with positive reinforcement, it does really, really help. I know it's very easy to say that because some dogs can be so sensitive about their feet that you do end up in some situations having to get them in the headlock. But it's not ideal. I mean, I think least restrictive practice is always the better. And dogs generally don't like being confined. And like I said, you know, if you need to use a muzzle, use a muzzle. But uh, as I said earlier... You don't want to use a tight muzzle, and, and people like often like look at me like I've gone out the bloody window and come in again at another door. Um, but if you've got a really tight muzzle on, it's restrictive. And if they feel restricted, it just increases fear and anxiety. You don't want a dog to be having a horrible experience on the table. So if it's just a little bit looser than what it needs to be, if you're doing that with their feet, you're safe, they're safe. But it's a matter of patience and time and repetition to get them used to those actions being undertaken. And then you can get to a point where you can do that and handle their feet without having a muzzle on. Um, I think a lot of people miss out having a lot of support and uh, with managing their dogs. And it's a real shame. I think one of the other things is a lot, a lot of the time um, when we are talking about feet, generally we're talking about trimming nails. And a lot of the time, the only reason owners will try to touch their dog's feet is to trim their nails. Uh, and, you know, trimming their nails can be quite uncomfortable. Uh, you know, a lot of dogs really hate having their nails trimmed. So you want to really try to make it that, you know, you, you, you pick up their feet and you manage them, even if you're not trimming them. So they don't learn every time you pick up a foot, it means they're going to have their nails cut. It's it's exactly the same principle when you've got a young yearling foal and you're bringing them on and you're picking up the feet and getting them used to being handled before they get the farrier. You know, it's exactly the same principle. Just because they're a dog and they're a terrier doesn't make it any less important or the same principles, they still apply. So I'm just pulling out a few of these bits here. I'm not going <coughs> mad. I just want to... Um, tidy you up you guys will have probably far more hair to sort out but like i said you just want to be following the basic lines that i said um 
personally, if I'm um, trimming something, you don't have to. Um, but like what we call the furnishings, which Rachel said earlier, is the face, that all of the leg hair and the underline, the bits we leave a bit longer. I, I like to bath and condition those areas. Quite often when I bath a dog, I won't bath like the body coat or what we've called the flat work. Um, so I, I won't bath this bit and I won't bath this bit, but I do like to bath and trim the leg hair, but a bath and condition the leg hair before I trim it. Um, cause I do find you can get a much more yeah. even finish. Um, but you don't have to bath the leg hair before you trim it. <clears throat> That's right. It does give a nicer finish and you've got something, you know. And uh, the thing with a wire coat is, it is a brittle coat and the thing is with leg hair if we don't bath and condition it um, it gets really brittle and it breaks um, and particularly for the dogs that we're showing we like to try to grow lots of leg hair and a lot of people think it's very it's a very alien concept to put conditioner in a coat that takes the wiry texture out of it a little bit um, but if you don't condition like if she doesn't have conditioner you can see now she hasn't been having her legs particularly conditioned very often so she has got quite sparse leg hair um, if we were trying to get her in show condition now we would want a much more dense leg hair and the only way we'll get that on her is with regular trimming regular bathing and regular conditioning there she has got a bit of a hairy bump um, yeah somebody just asked would you yeah. um, clip around the bum so <laughs> I would either clip it if they're normally clipped, if they have what we call a pet strip, where they clip the legs and down the front and up the bottoms. Yeah, keep doing that. If you've got a pair of clippers, then you're safe to use them and you know what you're doing. Otherwise, I would use a pair of thinning scissors to just go over there um, and just be really, really careful and mindful of the sanitary area. Um, but, you know, don't be afraid to hold on to those bits that belong to your boys and girls and trim around them. Um, you know, just use your thinning scissors and just do it carefully. I think um, there's not many pets out there that have full trims where their sanitary areas would actually be hand stripped. For those that are, I would wait till they grow out quite a bit and it's a bit like dead coat and it's ready to come out because it is a sensitive area and if they've missed their slot in the grooming window for that to be maintained, you're better off leaving it longer and then pulling it out a few hairs at a time. A bit like the same principle as doing the rears. Chuck a little bit at a time, just take a few hairs, don't rush it. Um, and it, it won't be that bad then experience for either. Which you can, you get your Oh no! Come on, let's get you done. So, this leg literally, I've just pulled a few loose bits off just to follow those lines I described earlier. So normally I would do the outside of the leg first and then the inside of the leg. So from the outside of the hip down, <coughs> from the inside of the thigh, down to the outside of the uh, paw. At the back of the hock, just a nice straight line down from the back down to the base. So you can do with a little bit up there. Good girl. <coughs> And a lot of people will scissor around the feet. If you um, avoid it, it's yeah, it, I I think it looks horrible <laughs> when you scissor around the feet and they've got scissor lines in and they grow a different texture and it does mat up more. You can pull the hair around the feet like you can see she didn't really make a fuss, um, you know, but if you do scissor around the feet, it's not the end of the world, but you can't get the same level of finish. A lot of people will scissor around the feet even on show dogs. Uh, here we don't. If we see somebody trimming one of our dogs, you know, if we've got somebody helping out and they get the scissors around their feet, they get their wrists smacked um, because it makes the hair really, really hard to pull again in the future and it really alters the texture and it mats and not, we just don't like it. But, you know, you can scissor around the feet. So her leg hair, well, from a show point of view, just show us how many uneven layers she's got in it really at the moment because she hasn't been having it worked. Turn you a bit pinky so people can see. <laughs> so she's got loads of layers there. And, um, I'm not going to go to town with that now because that's um, a bit of work <clears> for me to do away from this general demonstration. Um, so I'm just pulling off a bit of long stuff here today. Um, but the thing need... is, just by pulling these few hairs, that will stimulate a little bit of growth underneath. Oh, I just need to basically put some time into her furnishings and give her a proper 
faltering really but just to give those people some perspective of how long it would take if yeah. we really want to show this bitch in top condition really that's probably about six months worth of work on them furnishings to get them how yeah. we'd really like them yeah. um, show trimming really is a totally different ball game the principles of pulling the coat and everything is exactly the same but what we do and when we'll do it will be very different to if we're just keeping something in tidy kennel trim So you've got a question, why are they called furnishings? I don't really know the answer to that. No. People just called them that and I heard them call them that, so I call them that. I don't really oh, know where no, it came it's from. It's just, um, well, it's the finishing part yeah. on the dog, really, from the show point of view. You know, the furnishings, it's like the, it's like the frill on the curtains, yeah. <laughs> you know. It's just the finishing points. Um, so, um, and it's to make that differentiation about face, leg and underline in comparison to flat work and body work. Have you just seen yourself in the mirror? <laughs> Have you? You so bloody cute. You can. I know. You've been a very good baby. So I am literally now just going to even up this leg a little bit to make it a bit like this. I mean, like we said... Somebody said it's a bit difficult to hear the instructions, but I think that's probably... I think I might have had my finger over the microphone. <laughs> Sorry, folks. That'll be Dave in his technological... Hopefully research. you can hear us again <laughs> So, I'm literally just going to um, tidy up this leg a bit to look a bit like this one. Really easy, just think of a drain pipe. That's what you've got in your mind. You literally want to trim from the outside flat of the shoulder down to the outside edge of the foot. From the inside of the leg under the chest, straight down to the inside of the foot. And at the front, literally when we brush this up and brush this out, roughly from the point of contact with the front of the leg down to the foot, anything that sticks out beyond that can come off. So I didn't go mad this morning. I only pulled a few hairs off just to um, even it up a bit and give it a bit of shape. Like I say, I've got like um, quite a bit of work here. And um, for anybody that's having a go at trimming, but they're planning when we're out of lockdown, go back to their groomers. Um, if Even if you don't pull any hair on these legs, if you just brush them uh, with a pin brush and a comb and keep them mat free, your groomers will be very grateful and your dogs will um, get a much better finish at the groomers for having that done. Yeah. So always check between the toes. You should be able to, I mean, she's not very old, but she's quite good about letting me just spread her toes and have a look. See if there's any infection, if there's any mat. She's got a bit of something there. Just needs pulling up. And I'm actually going to pull that out. Um, I wouldn't suggest you necessarily do this on your pets, but I'm going to do it on her. If you can avoid, if you can pull mats out. It's a phone, yes? <laughs> she's so, so cute. That's fine, the rest of that's all right. So again, as this morning, brushing up and out. Um, I mean, she's got some length to her leg hair, but from a shape point of view, she has no density. got another question here. What do you do to improve the texture of furnishings? My girl has very soft furnishings. My boy has nice wiry texture. Uh, my first question would be, are they both hand stripped? And are their legs both all hand stripped as well? Um, Sometimes um, furnishings will be soft if groomers have been using thinning scissors on them or scissors or doing a bit of halfy-halfy, what I call half hand stripping, half scissoring, half thinning scissor. Um, <clears throat> So that, I mean, no, there are there are just differences in yes, coats. Yes, there are. Generally, if you've got something with a soft, uh, softer leg hair, they tend to grow more on what we call undercoat, which is the softer layers in the coat. Um, 
Whereas that's when you get the more sort of just pin wire type furnishings where they're really, really harsh, um, they tend to be the ones that don't have as much undercoat. Uh, and they're a kind of, from a maintenance point of view, they're a kind of benefits to having both. If you've got something with real harsh pin wire furnishings, yeah, they're really, really nice to trim and they're really, really nice texture. But if you try to grow any density to them, it's really, really difficult and you really have to heavily condition those leg hair. And they're a nightmare to show. Um, and they tend to stay much more matte free. Uh, if you've got real pin wire leg hair, they don't tend to matte up as much as when you've got really profuse undercoat. Uh, when you've got really profuse undercoat soft type furnishings, they're really, really nice and you can grow really great um, elaborate furnishings on them and you can shape them much more, but they tend to mat up much faster um, than what the, the pin wire types do. Right, so that's literally just took a layer off the outside of the leg. So what I'm going to do now is just do the inside of a leg. And towards the back of the inside of a leg, I'm going to take a layer down. Like, get an angle where people yeah. can see. And I'm just going to pull this. And I'm just holding over the paw up gently, just so she weight bears through that leg. Because it stops them dancing around. Um, and while she's got a... It's not hurting her. I'm only taking a few hairs at a time. It's just stopping her dancing around and she has to wait bare through it. So I'm just going to take that straight down there from the inside on this inside corner. And then back to the front. I know it's been a good deal. I think most there. about trimming legs. The, probably the greatest skill you can have that will help you trim a leg is getting really good with your pin brush and your comb. Yep. Um, because if you can comb it to where you want it to be, um, it makes actually pulling it really simple. But it's much easier said than done. And I think, it, you know, years and years, you, you still, we've still all got room for improvement with trimming their leg hair. Legs so different to the other one from this morning. What have you been doing? I think she's um, she's living with one of my wired dogs at the moment, and um, I think they're having a whale of a time playing together. But I think he's grabbing around this leg more than the other one. She's a bit more sparse where we, we We haven't trimmed her nails yet, which hopefully Rachel will take the tips off her nails. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't ever really trim their nails before pulling up their leg hair. Um, oh, oh, it's generally something I would leave till towards the end, personally. Um, a nice time to do it is actually when they're in the bath sometimes. Um, but it depends on your dog. But I, I wouldn't, if you, especially if you've got something not used to being on the table that often, I would try not to make it the absolute last thing that you do. Or the first. Yeah, because you don't really want them leaving the table or getting on the table with a bad experience. Uh, and, 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 you know, there are no two ways about it. Ter a lot of terriers hate having their nails trimmed and there's no real way around that because it is a really important thing to keep their nails trimmed. Particularly, as we said right at the very beginning, their dew claws because they can't wear their dew claws down by walking on concrete. So I'm just going to pick her foot up and instead of scissoring around, I'm just going to take the excess hairs off the outside of her foot off with my knife. I'm not trimming down to her toes. I'm just taking the excess long hairs off on the edge. Just a few hairs at a time. I'm literally not, not taking many at all. And you can see, look, she's not really reacting very much to having her feet trimmed. Um, even though she hasn't had a huge amount done with her, she is used to having her feet picked up.
I don't think a lot of the time with their feet it is about anything you're doing being particularly uncomfortable or anything. Um, I think a lot of the time it's just the, the handling and that you're just doing something they don't want you to do. I don't even think it's about discomfort sometimes, is it? It's just... No. I said it's like going to school. I have to Major, I can sympathise because I hate anybody touching my feet and I'd want to punch them in the face because I hate <laughs> having my feet touched. So <laughs> it doesn't really matter if anybody's doing anything horrible or not. But like I said, it's a bit like them going right, So we've got school. a question here. Thoughts on clipping nails versus using a Dremel? I, have, I tried a Dremel once <laughs> and I got a, a great big knot of dog's hair wrapped all around the Dremel. It started smoking and it blew up. So I've never used one again, but I don't know anybody else that's had that experience. So I banned myself from Dremels. That could be a very <laughs> experience so, with Dremels. So yeah, I don't use Dremels, but... Um, but yeah, I mean, I know a lot of people are quite happy using them. At the end of the day, if it works for you and your dog's happy having it done that way, I don't see what the issue is. Um, at the end of the day, they just need to be shortened down, whether you use a nail file, a horse file, uh, a pair of clippers, uh, as in nail clippers, or a Dremel, it doesn't matter. The outcome is the outcome. The nails need to be tipped and kept in check. So um, I don't think there's any particular problem with using a Dremel. As long as it's not Dave operating, yeah, he's, he's not safe Dave with one. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, it's just about, mm. I think with Dremels, it's more about getting wires used to the sensation of it uh, and the noise as much as anything else. Uh, one thing while we're just talking about nail cutters, um, Rachel and I, we like this type of nail cutter. Um, you can get ones. I don't know if we've even got any because we don't really like them. I think I've um, been the last. Uh, what would you call you're it? On More, the guillotine. Yeah, ones. you can get like guillotine ones, yeah. and I don't like them because when they get blunt, they tend to. Oh, it's really difficult to explain without showing something. It's a bit difficult to show when I've we don't have one. I've been. Um, but they cut in a different way, the guillotine ones. And when they get blunt, they do really bend the nail quite a lot. And the dogs get really quite uncomfortable. Whereas does these, even once they start getting a bit blunt and a bit older, um, they still don't tend to uh, bend the nail in the same way. Yeah, somebody's just put, Max prefers to the Dremel, but you have to be careful of the hair. <laughs> Yes, I, I can second that one after my one experience with the Dremel. <laughs> Don't get the hair in it. Now she's going to have uneven legs. Damn, people can see because that a bit. Because she's got uneven legs to work with. And I would say that's her playing with her friend in the kennels, who looks like he's been grabbing around the leg. Um, but at least it's a tidy... And in terms of cutting nails, this bitch has got nice nails to do because if we just look at her foot, yeah. she has got white nails and you can clearly see the blood vessels in them where the pink starts, if I can get it in focus. Um, it's when you've got black nails, it's much harder to do. Uh, and on wires, you will get white or black nails. Um, like so hers aren't, hers aren't too bad to do. Right, the, at the back of the leg, again... You're just looking for a straight line down, really, in rough general terms. Like I said, again, this is just a rough maintenance trim just to help you guys out who are struggling, who can't get to the groomers to give you some ideas of what to aim for. And the other thing is the reason we've decided to do it like this is there are lots of people out there at the moment doing videos aimed at people doing high-level show grooming. Um... Uh, uh, and it's not really uh, very good for people at home that haven't had their wires coats worked in that way to give them the expectation that that's what they're going to achieve. So we're trying really to fill a little bit of a gap um, in, in what's had out so there. We've so many calls from uh, wire pet owners that are struggling and we just thought this was um, a good stop gap really, hopefully, to try and help people. Right, so I am going to trim my nails. So. And, and now a good tip if you're doing something and it doesn't like having its feet touched or you haven't done nails before 
Again, like we said, right at the beginning with handling. Start with the back feet away from the bitey end. Get your neck strap up so they haven't got... You don't want a big, big, long neck strap. So they've got lots and lots of room to swing on it. So get this up quite tight so they can't get their, their head down really, really low. Uh, and then even if you do, you do catch a nail and make them bleed, it does happen. Even when you're really, really careful, sometimes you'll still catch them and they will bleed a little bit. So, and then you can get um, like quick stuff from um, some of the pet suppliers that will stop bleeding if you did catch one. So it's not something to panic about, but I would keep some in stock just in case. Now, this is a perfect example. This girl generally does have her furnishings washed and that. And her nails aren't particularly long. Look, you can see where her quick comes to. So she only needs the tips off, but her dew claw... Okay. So the area, somebody's just asked, um, do you pull the hair from between the toes? So on her, we have yeah. pulled it. Yes. If you can pull it, it's better if you can. Yes. But if you need to scissor it, if they've got a really whopping great mat in there, um, then we will sometimes scissor them, but we yeah. try not to let them get matted like that if we can. So, But this is a good example with nails. I'd say that's been missed. The last one saw twice uh, nails have been tipped because a dew claw is in far more longer length of need of cutting than what her actual paws are. Good girl. I know. Good girl. So, all you need to do... I know we've got, a, uh, we've got a few people viewing from all around the world. And all around the world, there's different laws on taking off dew claws and not taking them off. So, I'm not going to go into that. But anybody at home that doesn't know... Um, you should always check to see if your dog has got one one of these dew claws because they're really prone to growing in a circle and starting growing back into the yeah. pad and dogs can get really, really lame and really, really sore with these. Um, so this is one area when you put... Every time you put your dog on the table, you should, you should be checking check this before you start doing anything with them, really. It's really important. And uh, As a vet, I've seen a lot of dogs come in with nails growing into their pads, uh, oh. particularly when I did a very short stint at the RSPCA, I saw loads of those. And it's really easy to get your combs and bushes stuck in them when you're grooming if you're not. Yeah, these wide them. tooth combs like this, they are perfect for catching in the dew claw. And I have actually known people rip out dew claws, um, which is another reason to be gentle and not rip up and down the leg with your comb. So when you're doing nails, as Dave said, um, you know, you need to look to see where the quick is. Good girl. It, obviously, if you've got a black from. nail, you're not going to see it. Just take a tiny bit off at a time with so a black she nail. she just needs a tiny bit off. Come here, girl. Good girl. Good girl. Steady, steady. I know. Good girl. You're crying. I'm not even touching girl. you with the bloody clippers yet. Good I girl. know. But you do it. So I'm just going to take this. And not many of them do like it, but it does need doing. And she's been reasonably good, actually. Good girl. So Good we're girl. just literally tipping them. We're not taking a huge amount off. Come on, let's put your feet <laughs> back on the table. I don't want you strangling yourself. I know. Good girl. Good girl. And obviously, if you've got someone who can help you at this time, that's always helpful. Put your feet down. Put your feet down. But like, it can be really tempting now for me to get this bitch in a headlock to stop her moving. But I, uh, personally, you really don't want to do that unless you absolutely have to. And it's absolutely vital that you trim those nails at that moment in time in that way. Because the more you do heavy handling, the more you feed the behaviour, um, you know, of playing up because they think you're doing something really horrible. Um, so try to be as gentle with the handling as you can be in a safe way. And if you need to put a muzzle on, even really good dogs with like having everything else done sometimes i'll put a muzzle on if i know they're really particular about their having their nails trimmed and sometimes wires are funny about you doing their front feet but not their back feet yeah they're always worse if they can see because they can see <laughs> what you're doing like it's like this mental thing with them I'm just going to do her back feet. But, you know, obviously this is one of our own girls, so we know what she's like. If she wasn't one of mine and I'd never done her nails before, I'd always start with the back foot okay. and make sure I get that noose up quite high so they can't move too much. So, again, it's the same principles with the back feet. 
Generally, you don't need to take much off the back feet, and she really just needs the tip taking. And you can see. And hopefully, you can see there. Rachel's got her foot in a fairly natural position backwards. Yeah. Um, they'll struggle a lot if you start trying to pull the legs out sideways because their dog, their yeah. legs aren't designed to go sideways. So if you can pull the leg back rather than sideways, the dog will tolerate that much better. Yeah. And always support the foot. You know, have the foot in your hand and support the foot, and you're supporting the leg. And you can see now, like Rachel said, she's doing her back foot. This girl's hardly even noticing what's going on. I'm sure a lot of the time it's just because they can see. So literally just tipped. And like I said, I'm not going to do a bump. Um, I'm going to leave that for now. But if uh, for you guys, I would just put the thing. I don't want to put the thin scissors up her. And I'd like to see that grow out a bit more because she's going to have a baboon bump yeah. when I do trim her. Um, I will just take that all off. Um, so, let's just... She did not a before and after. She just took a picture for this thing, really, this morning. Because she was quite hairy when we started. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just laughing. I can hear heavy and amazing, the old geriatric outside and... Right, has anybody got anything else they want to ask? Like I said, checking the paws, if you need to scissor out the paws. Hang on, wait, we've got a question here I've missed. I have a 14-week-old wire. I've pulled out the puppy fluff, Lovely. but left the ear hair a little heavier. Sorry, Jax. Uh, when can I begin to full strip uh, on that puppy, basically? Um, on body coat now, like, leave the puppy fluff now. I'd leave that another four weeks. You'll see, see it growing up and coming out, um, and I'd then start pulling all the body coat off again in about four weeks' time. Um, you normally find they'll come down to nothing. <laughs> What's so. this? Ooh, I know what treats are. Good girl. Um, Good girl. Regarding ears, Good like girl. With this girl, um, you keep the inside of the ear canal clear. It's here in my hand. No, no, I picked it up. <laughs> I picked it up. Oh, you picked it up. It's not on the table. So you can see now, she's just had her nails cut about a minute ago. And, you know, she's still there now wagging her tail and we're still not making it a it's negative experience there. for her. I picked it up for you. It's not on the table. Um, about the puppy ears. Yeah, keep the insides cleared off and off the sides of the head cleared off so they can sit properly. Um, I can understand why you left a bit of white on them, but then slowly over time you can take a little bit of that off. Hey! Hey! You know, if there's anybody there and they've got questions and they don't want to ask them, you know, in front of everybody now on this live stream, uh, you know, we are a really helpful committee. If you want to email anybody on committee or, you know, you want to send us Facebook messages, we will try to help where we can. Rachel will be back in just a second. We've just got two of the puppies that are out playing in a run and I think one's decided to try to poke its head somewhere it doesn't fit. Say hello to everybody, Pinky. You've been a very good girl. <laughs> So have we got any more questions from anybody there? Sorry about that, folks. <laughs> we just had a white puppy girl who decided to get her head stuck. 
Pinky! Oh. So I've forgotten what I was saying now. Just going on about questions. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do a question and answer sheet. We'll put it up on the website. Um, yeah, we'll try to go through because throughout there's a few questions of similar sorts of themes. So we'll try to go through all the messages, have a bit of a look and group things into uh, themes. And we'll try to put together a bit of a, a question through the seminar and an answers. Um, we sort of touched on it at the start, but if there's any particular events people want us to try to run, particularly when we're in lockdown, we're happy to try, you know, uh, particularly for our members to, to to run things that are going to be useful for people. Um, it's much easier if people give us suggestions rather than us just guessing at what people want. Um, like Rachel said, this is very much a um, basic kennel trim. Um, usually we'd like to you know do these sorts of demonstrations more at our live events when we have people come on our grooming days but obviously in lockdown we can't do it so this is sort of a not really a substitute for that but this is sort of the best for what we can do at the moment we do have a grooming seminar in September when hopefully we won't all be in lockdown and you know anybody with a, a wire coated breed is very welcome to book on to come on that uh, the one thing about the seminars is you know there's you know, normally five or six of us with quite a lot of experience and we, we normally have about up to about 20 people come on the seminars and they're very well received. Um, we have people there from very novice people to professional groomers and um, people are able to get a lot of one-to-one -one support and tuition. So if you've got a wire and you've been having a little bit of a go at yourself or you would like to have a go at yourself and you want some more support, then by all means, <coughs> have a look at the uh, website. And the details for it will be on there. What are you doing? <laughs> um, we just want to thank everybody for being so patient with us. This has gone on far longer than yeah. I intended to today. <laughs> Um, but we've had a few hiccups and distractions. Well, we still seem to have had quite a lot of people view, and we've been keeping an eye on how many people are there. And because we've had lots of people still there, we try to carry on. Uh, you know, if there's anything anybody particularly wants us to go over again now, we can go and try and find another dog and have a go, or we can, you know, do it on Pink Pinky if she's got any any left in that particular area. Um, but if if nobody's got anything particular that they want to go through, then yes, thank you all for watching. And uh, yep, yeah, on behalf of the Wire Fox Terrier Association, we hope you're finding this helpful for looking after your wires at home during these difficult times. And please don't hesitate to contact us. We're, you know, we're here for the breed. We're not just here for show people. Um, that's not what we're about. We're quite an inclusive club. So um, please make use of us. We're happy to help. We're very obliging. So thank you very much. Thanks um, then, folks. I'm not seeing any particular pressing thought. So we're going to go now. Um, you know, you, you, you can message us and whatnot. We, we are around for the rest of the day. Thanks then, everyone. We'll see you. Bye.